Hey guys, what's up? My name's Vic Taylor and welcome to another Modern Warfare 3 video. Today I'm going to be showing you some Team Defender where I go 31 and 13. You couldn't hear me up until this point, could you? That is amazing. I'm not restarting because I'm fucking exhausted and I want to get this done. So what I'm going to be talking about today is actually something that I've kind of mentioned in passing in a couple of commentaries and enough people have requested that I discuss it in more detail for me to actually do so. So whenever I tell this story, because I tell it an awful lot because it's, you know, something that's quite big in my life, I always kind of mash it up into a bigger one, so bear with me. But at my high school, high school over here is from when you're 11 years old to, I think, 16, 17, there would be a school trip every year, you would pay, I don't know, 100, 200 quid and you could go at some place around the country or wherever and you would do learning and then activities and fun and all that kind of, you know, sh shit stuff that you do and, you know, school really, I'm sure you've all gone on school trips and you'd stay there for a week, two weeks and you basically could just skip school for that period of time and have fun with your friends. The first year, which was year seven, we went just to basically, I don't know, a couple of miles into sa southern England, probably more than a couple of miles, but not very far away from home at all. I can't remember much happening other than me climbing a very tall tree next to the building and getting caught and managing to get myself extremely sick in the process, meaning that my mother had to come get me and bring me home. Uh, it didn't go too well, as I'm sure you can imagine, got very sick and wasn't very happy about it, so I came home. The second year is the big story. I went qu through that quite quickly. This is a nine minute video, so I'm going to have to waffle a bit. Is the one where the main main story happens. We were down in Cornwall, which is very far into the south of England, about six to eight hours, depending on traffic, away from where I live. And we were all having fun. We'd been to the beach earlier in the day. I'd got terribly sunburnt because I had managed to be a brilliantly intelligent person and pick out the wetsuit without any sleeves or legs. It just had, you know, up to the knees and shoulders. And that's not a good idea because even if you go in the water, you're still going to get fucking sunburnt. And we did all these kinds of things. We dived off high cliffs into the water. We did rafting and all this kind of shit that you do in the sea, but I got very sunburnt and was very unhappy. But the, that evening we had an activity where we went bowling, I'm sure you all know what bowling is, and I have an extremely bad nut allergy. It's not the kind of allergy where I just get slightly out of breath if I get nuts on my hands or near me, it is the kind of nut allergy that caused me, when I got some on my hands at the bowling alley, from obviously picking up a bowling ball after someone with nuts on their hands had picked it up and then I had, I don't know, scratched for my face or rubbed my face or whatever, it had got in my mouth and that whole system had happened. I ended up having to go to hospital with extremely bad allergy reaction and it was so bad that I actually stopped breathing. I had to get my heart restarted by an adrenaline needle shoved into my arm so I was dead for 20 to 30 seconds. Which as I'm sure you can agree it's quite it's quite a big thing but before I go into the details about it the experience itself hasn't I don't know, it's affected seemingly the people around me more than it actually affected me. I, I'm i not sure, you know, entirely what's going on there, but probably if something terrible and kind of life-changing happens to you, you don't really, well at least I don't, I don't really kind of, ex I don't know, except it's the wrong word, but I haven't really thought about terms to put this across to you simply but it didn't really make that big of a deal with me. I mean, for the people around me it obviously was. I mean, I was legally dead for half a minute. It obviously isn't good in any kind of the imagination. And it was quite tough for the people around me, I feel. But for me, it was just kind... It wasn't even a traumatic experience at the time or looking back on it. It was, I wasn't even panicking, because you would think that if you cannot breathe, if you, you know, your vision is going black, etc., then you would think that you would be panicking, you would be just kind of saying, oh, what the fuck is happening, this is not good at all. But, no, I 
was pretty calm throughout the whole experience. I remember I remember most of it. I I didn't black out as in the you know I was only unconscious for those thirty seconds, and I didn't really have the impression that I had been unconscious or I had been dead. It was just I had been you know a, a blink of the eye as it were, and you know and that happened and everything. So yeah, I don't really think that it affected me as much as the people around me expected it to to have affected me. But it was obviously thinking about it even now, it's obviously quite a big thing and I'm sure that it has affected me in ways that my psyche just hasn't, you know, it hasn't covered. It's just in my subconsciousness and it's done something to me. But the actual experience, uh, I had a very large, if I remember correctly, needle shoved into my upper arm and that had no anaesthetic, no kind of, you know, painkiller at all. So it hurt quite a lot and I do remember the pain. So at that point or, you know, the point after when the pain was still present, I must have been conscious. So I cannot have been unconscious for that long of a time. But because of that no anaesthetic, I now have this big scar on my right shoulder. And that, I believe the doctors said that it had permanently killed some nerve endings there. And I'm not sure how, quite how that works because apparent nerve endings are meant to transmit pain. And whenever I hit my upper arm, it really hurts. So if they're dead, I don't get quite how that's possible. But whenever I just, you know, even tap my upper arm... There, there is pain there so I've had to be quite careful because I do a lot of weightlifting, a lot of uh, kind of bodybuilding shit because I need to I do a lot of sports so I need to stay fit and I need to be really careful about lifting weights and doing everything because I don't know I don't think the muscle is weak because they've done a lot of extra work on it to get it back to the state that it was before this all happened but it is kind of Delicate, the you know, sounds a bit pussy, but I think that it could be the right term for it. It's a bit delicate, and I don't really want to bang it because when I do, it, it's kind of like when you hit the back of your elbow, between the back of your elbow and like the back of your arm. There's a nerve ending there that, you know, it carries all the feeling for that arm, and when you hit that, your arm goes numb. It's kind of like that. So I haven't had to waffle at all. But that was overall my experience of life and death and I don't know. I didn't see a bright light to cover, you know, the basic thing. I didn't, you know, see God or anything like that. But legally dead for 20 to 30 seconds, I didn't panic, was very calm throughout it. And even though it must have affected me in some way, it's not immediately apparent to me without considering it at in greater detail, greater depth. If you have any questions about this, uh, I'll be happy to respond to any of them. I mean, it might seem like a bit of a sensitive topic and an issue, but I don't know, it's really not. And any questions, I'll be happy to ask. I'm down with everything. So I really hope you enjoyed this commentary. I um, hope it answered the pe the questions that the people who requested it had. And it's all chill and I aim not to die again and I think you should have that aim as well but I hope you never die in the first place <laughs> you know what I'm saying so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and commentary and I ended this game 31 and 13 team defender is a pretty damn awesome game especially you know if you're with a team because playing it solo is a bit of a bitch and I will see you next time guys peace